Ah, it feels just five minutes ago we were looking at the text tool and suddenly we've graduated to scrolling. So I'm going to click and drag the credit scroll generator to the end of my timeline. And when I start moving the playhead back and forth, you can already see the default title placeholder moving up and down. I'm going to click on this generator to reveal its controls in the inspector. So once again, we have the text box at the top some formatting controls at the bottom that reflect the ones in the title tool, a drop shadow, a background color, and then the usual compositing, transforming, and cropping modes. Now I can pop in a few lines of detail so I can immediately start demonstrating how to control the speed. So give me a second. I'm going to place the playhead at the beginning of the scroll generator and play it forward and you can see it starts off screen it's traveling relatively quickly right now and just as the generator ends so the titles go off screen. If you think your credits are moving too fast, you just have to change the duration of this title generator because the speed is only determined by the duration of this clip. It is not dependent on the amount of information that you have or the size of your font or anything like that. So I could also now decide to make my text much smaller. And if I start to play back, it will move very, very slowly. Another thing that I'd like to point out uh, that is not immediately obvious in this interface is how to get the classic looking film and titles where you have two columns scrolling up together. So usually because there's not a quick way to do it, people end up doing something like this. They will just center everything and then they will type in people's names and their roles, which is good. It's, it's very attractive and it definitely works on short films. I'm not very good at coming up with names off the top of my head, uh, so I'm just going to put my name on everything. Maybe I should just copy and paste. How about that? So that tends to look all right. Unfortunately, we don't have rich text like we did with the text tool, so I'm not going to be able to have different formatting for the names and the labels, but I'm not too fussed. If you don't feel like compromising and using this technique, then what you could do is the following. I'm going to get rid of all the names that I put down. So I just have one side of the titles and I'm going to have them right aligned so that I can get a nice straight line down the side and I'm going to place the anchor to the right hand side. So what that's going to do is throw this entire layer to the center of my window and give me this nice straight line. The next thing I want to do is either throw in a second scroll tool or perhaps what might be easier is just to make a copy of the current one because we've got all our lines and all the correct fonts and sizes and I am going to just go to this edit point, deactivate video one and paste it into video two. So now they're duplicates and this time I'm going to right align and change the anchor to the opposite side. So now they're both side by side. I probably want to move this off to the side just a little bit. So I'll go down into the transform controls and input a small value into the position. So let's see how 10 looks. Maybe 20 here, and then I'm going to click on the one at the bottom and negative 20. So there we got a gap, and I'll select the top one, and this time I'm going to put in the name. And as long as I have the same font size and the same amount of lines, they should line up perfectly. And as long as the duration of the two scroll generators matches as well, then they will both play simultaneously as well. So now it looks like I have a single title moving from bottom to top, when in fact I have two lines running side by side. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time.